the adrenal gland. So let's start off by drawing um, an adrenal gland. So follow along with me. And then put um, a little center in it. And this center is called the adrenal medulla. Medulla just means the middle of it. And recall that the adrenal medulla is stimulated by the sympathetic nervous fibers from the trunk. And then those sympathetic fibers stimulate the medulla to release what are known as catecholamines. Let's see, so I'll actually put it back. So they release hormones into the blood, and these hormones are of a class called catecholamines, specifically epinephrine and a little bit of norepinephrine. And these hormones enhance, in fact, I'm gonna use um, orange for function on this, just like we did on the last page. So enhance um, all aspects of fight or flight. And catecholamines are not steroid hormones, as opposed to the hormones that are made in the cortex of the adrenal that we're going to talk about now. So the cortex of the adrena, or adrenal gland is um, this outer part. And the adrenal cortex makes steroid hormones. It is stimulated to make its steroid hormones and release its steroid hormones when it is stimulated by um, acetyl or uh, sorry ACTH. So ACTH from the pituitary gland stimulates the cortex to make and release steroid hormones. Remember that ACTH stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone, and so it causes the cortex of the adrenal gland to release hormones. ACTH has a little spurt early in the morning, I wanna say 4 a.m. And this will allow you to prepare for the stresses of the day. In fact, it's a good idea to just always keep in mind that adrenal glands are your stress glands. You have two of these little guys. They get their name because they're adjacent to the kidney. So adjacent meaning next to the kidney. So the kidney is like this and then the adrenal glands sit on top like a little dunce cap on top of each of the kidneys, in humans anyway. So this little spurt early in the morning helps us to get ready to deal with the stresses of the day. In order to make an ample amount of stress hormones that we're gonna talk about right now, you need to have adequate reserve supplies of cholesterol. So cholesterol is modified in the cortex of the adrenal gland to make the following three hormones, three types of hormones anyway. So the first is aldosterone. So cholesterol is modified 
and in so doing, uh, it is the building block to make aldosterone. So aldosterone will target the kidneys. So we'll use blue like I did on a, a previous page. It targets the kidneys, and because we'll learn about it later, I'm going to mention that it especially targets um, the, the DCT, or it's called the distal convoluted tubule of the kidneys, and the effect that it has on them is to increase salt reabsorption and then water follows the salt. So more salt and water return to the bloodstream and ultimately what this does is increase blood pressure. And it occasionally can lead to edema if it gets bad enough. But it's going to increase blood volume and either blood pressure or possibly causing some edema in uh, severe cases. So orange for the function, blue for its target, and hold on, I forgot my yellow. and yellow for the name, aldosterone. Okay, next up, sex hormones. And I'm going to focus on testosterone because that's the primary sex hormone that comes out of the adrenal gland. That said, if um, someone takes, let's say, anabolic steroids or taking too much testosterone, um, then what can happen is the adrenal gland doesn't know what to do with all of that extra testosterone, and it starts converting it into estrogen, which supposedly accounts for the reasons why guys that are taking a lot of anabolic steroids can actually have their penis shrink. Um, they might um, actually start to have their voice get higher, more like a female. But in normal amounts, testosterone is important in helping us handle stress. It um, targets most cells. But what we are going to particularly note then is it's going to be important in um, bone and muscle strength. It's going to affect sex drive. Uh, it affects how we store fat, male pattern or female pattern. Uh, it has brain effects that may affect our um, aggression, uh, competition, things like that, um, and uh, patterns of hair growth. So all these things that we associate with testosterone and um, come, this also comes from the adrenal cortex. So in females, they actually do make testosterone, but it's coming from their adrenal cortex. In males, their testes are making way more testosterone than the adrenal cortex ever would. So it, it contributes much less in men. But in females, it's an important source of testosterone. And then last, but most important in my opinion for our discussion about stress hormones would be cortisol. Sometimes it's called cortisone, sometimes it's called corticosteroid. Actually, I just am going to write cortisol. That's what I usually do. Um, and there are a variety of similar style of hormones, and I'm just going to group them all under cortisol. So then let's use blue. Um, oops, I did this wrong, didn't I? So these were actually the functions of testosterone. And then this was its target. And then cortisol, yellow. This guy's dying. And then in blue for its target, then 
uh, most body cells. But I'm going to give you a few uh, places that it has um, really important effects that I'd like to talk about. So uh, adipose tissue. Cortisol stimulates uh, lipolysis. And what that will do is increase fatty acids in the blood so that we're prepared for a stressful event, mobilize energy. And then effects on uh, the liver. is a stimulation of uh, glycogenolysis that is going to um, break down glucose or glycogen to increase blood glucose and that will mobilize energy as well and in fact, if we're sick and stressed out and there's a lot of cortisol stimulating glycogenolysis, people can have elevated blood sugar during such times. And then pretty much everywhere, uh, cortisol will stimulate, or I should say decrease inflammation and otherwise decrease immune activity. This one is maybe not quite as obvious why this is happening, whereas it's obvious that we're mobilizing energy with these kind of effects. But if you think about that, fighting infection is not something that will keep you alive in the next hour of stress. It's more something that needs to be ongoing. It's more of a resting and repairing thing that we do when we're sleeping, when we're not under stress. And so, um, Cortisol uh, reduces the energy spent on long-term health. That's kind of how I like to think about it. It's trying to help you survive in the moment, so you're conserving energy that you to spend on long-term health in order to use more energy in the moment. But... This is a little bit uh, scary to think about, but if you're under stress chronically and you have this going on long periods of time and you have this decreased immune system, uh, you'll see increased illness, you'll see slow wound healing, and scariest of all, maybe an increase in cancer cells because one of the jobs of our immune system is to destroy cancer before it um, gets big in its early stages. And if the immune system is suppressed, then it would not be seeking out and destroying abnormal cells. Okay, and then I'm going to wrap up this page with um, a discussion about uh, Cushing's disease. So Cushing's disease is... Um, Oops. It's when there's too much uh, cortex hormones, too many. And so if there's too much aldosterone, then there will be edema, high blood pressure. Edema and high blood pressure can be symptoms of this disease. If there is too much testosterone, then um, there might be uh, more acne, more facial hair. And if this is a female, then it's going to be quite obvious something is uh, wrong. There will be a redistribution of fat due to testosterone's influence and cortisol's influence where um, they tend to uh, have belly fat and uh, back of the neck. 
So it, these are mobile fat areas. It appears that in Cushing's disease, the fat redistributes to places where it can be mobilized very quickly in case of stress. And then the legs become quite thin. The face might become moon-shaped. And then because of uh, too much cortisol, then uh, the person will probably have high blood sugar. And I think that was all I wanted to say about Cushing's. So all of these symptoms make sense when you think about too much aldosterone, too much testosterone, and too much cortisol.